that you're you know, teaching me throughout the way. Um, so with the, you know, kind of using those resources that can come down to, from accounting perspective, it could come down to, hey, like I'm really looking into like CPA studying groups or, you know, is there, are there other aspects that you're looking into to, you know, study for your CPA? What are some benefits that you're coming across? What are, you know, some struggles that you're coming across? Have you found like good studying material? Like I said, good study groups, you know, all those things that you might not be privy to, but they've, you know, done some of the legwork for and they can help give you a little bit of information. Um, so, you know, really utilizing that as well. So, you know, you want to make sure that you're really going to different events, you know, events like this, where you can connect with not only, um, you know, recruiters are a good, you know, network to have because nothing's better than if you're randomly looking for a position, having a few recruiters on like LinkedIn that you've connected with at multiple career fairs and stuff and just saying, hey, like just checking in, you know, kind of jumping ship at my current company, seeing if there's anything out there or if you know of any opportunities. A lot of recruiters, you talk about a strong network, <laughs> recruiters know recruiters that know recruiters. It is a very tight knit, um, very intricate webbed um, networking. So there's random friends from every company I've been at that I could call that I know have gone to other companies now. And then they have people that go to other companies. And I could be like, hey, I have a friend who is looking for a position. Like I might not hire for those type of people but I probably know someone or someone that I know knows someone that, you know, is hiring for those type of positions or can help you or they work at not a specific, like I work for an individual company. Obviously I work for Cone Resnick. I hire for Cone Resnick, but there's also, I have friends who hire for agencies. So like the Aerotechs and things like that, where they search for all of these other companies to help them hire people. So, you know, it, it is really beneficial to have a, you know, have some connections with recruiters. Going to career fairs, not necessarily to, um, if you're a little too early, that's fine. Go to those career fairs because we start noticing faces. You know, as recruiters, if, you, if you're just stopping by just to like catch up, like, hey, how are you? Like, I know I'm a little early, but I just wanted to like get my name out there, have, you know, kind of get some information from you. You know, have those general conversations because when it comes time for you to be considered for like an internship or anything, we might be like, I really like this kid. Like they always stop by, they always say, hey, like they're super, you know, they they always take initiative, super sweet, like really like them. And you might get pushed ahead of a lot of people. Like, you know, those type of things really do help. Um, and having those connections can really slide you through um, to like the top of a pile. You know, I might slowly just take out your resume and be like, I really liked that person. So I'm gonna go ahead and move them through. Or I've been talking to them for the last two, three years. Of course, I'm gonna push them through. Um, so really utilizing career fairs, like I said, events like this, um, where you can come and talk to recruiters, you can build that, you know, rapport with them, you know, ask questions, show your face, because those are things that happen, um, especially like in this virtual world, like, I'm not saying like everyone turn your camera on right now. I'm just saying like, from the aspect of, you know, when we, when we come to these virtual events, if you're asking questions, we're like, oh, I know, I recognize that name. Oh, I recognize that name. You know, like those type of things start popping up. Um, that just become a little bit more noticeable. Like for, for instance, I've seen Leander a couple of times on camera from a couple of presentations that I've done. You know, I'm like, I know that name. I know that face. Like those are things that start clicking with me. And I'm like, oh, he, he was really good. He presents well, he, he speaks well, like great kid, love him, move him through. You know, those type of things happen. So being able to ask those questions being able to walk through the process, like, you know, and I'm not saying just make those connections with recruiters. I'm just saying like, it's always good to have maybe a recruiter or two in, in like your pocket, so to say, as far as like keeping that connection with them, whether it's through LinkedIn, whether it's just, you know, random connections like this and having that definitely always utilize LinkedIn as much as possible with connecting with people um, just so you can kind of keep that open communication. So, any questions in regards to that so far? And please feel free guys, if you have questions that randomly pop up, um, you can ask at any time. <laughs> Alrighty. So um, what I would also really um, stress is obviously, if 
if a company that you're really interested in is hosting their own events, like sometimes here from Resnick, we do, um, we, for instance, um, we had a, we have what we call a pyramid series. So we do different series throughout the, throughout the year where we send out invites. Anyone can attend. We like to have everyone come and, and meet like our teams meet. And it's a different topic each time. Um, one specifically that did well with us was pathway to partner. Um, so we had our office. I'm actually from the, um, from the East coast. If any of you know, from seeing me in a couple of these presentations, um, previously. So I'm in Maryland, but I handle our mid Atlantic market. So we had all of our office managing partners in each of our offices um, for Mid-Atlantic. So it was four of them all come on and kind of just tell like how they got to where they are, kind of telling their backstory um, and, you know, really just giving us a lot of information. And some of them started, um, we actually had three out of the four had started with Cone Resnick as an entry level or intern and worked their way through the company up all the way to an office managing partner. Did it happen overnight? No. Did it happen in five years? Absolutely not. But, you know, going from all the way at the very entry level of a career and working your way through a company until you're an office managing partner, which is the person who oversee, like there's partners and then there's office managing partners and they oversee all of the operation of the whole entire office, um, which is a big deal. So, you know, when you're looking and you have this exposure to be able to pick the brains of you know, one of the highest positions in our company, that's a big deal. You know, being it, that's that time you want to show your face. You want to ask the good questions. You want to get your name out there. Um, so especially if they're the office managing partner for the office that you're trying to get into. Um, we've also had different series where we've had our CEO on. Another huge opportunity, turning the camera on, getting your name out there, asking a question like, Taking advantage of question time when you have, you know, higher level at, like executives or, or partners or things like that, that's like a great opportunity to come with some type of question um, because that's what's going to be like, oh, that kid actually, like, you'll be surprised, like, they'll remember names and like, oh, they actually asked a really good question. Um, you know, so try to think of a question kind of going into it. Or like really pay attention to where you have a question at the end, because when they open that and then it's like dead silent, we're like, okay, guys, like, come on, ask a question. Like, this is a partner or this is our CEO. Like, you don't have any questions. Like, this is a great opportunity to pick their brain. So, you know, utilizing those times that you have access to someone, because that access doesn't come, I'm not saying like, oh, you can never talk to them again. No, there's definitely, you know, times that they can sit down with people, but they are very busy. So it's really hard, the, the, the chance, like the ability to get all four of our office managing partners on one call with their schedules was very challenging, but it was really nice to hear like how they all pretty much went, had different ways that they got to where they were, but you know, how three out of the four had actually started and stayed with that company you know, they've been working there for 15, 20, whatever amount of years. Like that's a, that's a really solid career. And that speaks volume to the retention of the company and, you know, people loving where they work. So really utilizing that as well. Um, and like I said, it's just, it's an avenue for newer opportunities, having the connection with recruiters or with professionals after a career fair, or, you know, that can always lead to either your first position or newer opportunities or promotions or you know whatever that looks like you always want to try to create those bonds with people who are in um higher level and i'm not just saying only do it to promote your career like you'd be surprised how much you can just learn from them in general you know it is a lot of information that can come from someone who has already been in your shoes who has already freshly came out of college. I had a, a student ask me um, at a, an event that I worked earlier today. And it was actually a really interesting question. They said, you know, how did you, how did they word it? It was, oh, I think they said with the, um, the caption on my, <coughs> excuse me, with the caption on my background, it says, um, be a part of like something greater, like, you know, doing it like looking at it from that perspective and I'm like huh that's interesting I didn't think of it like that way and I'm like 
well, I do feel like I'm a part of something greater because like, and from my perspective, I look at it as I'm the first line of defense in a company as far as like I sell the company to a possible candidate like I have to sell you what we have and what we can bring to the table. But I also utilize my platform to really just kind of I network in a different way because I yes I'm hiring for Cone Resnick but my goal as a recruiter especially in campus recruiting is to really just help navigate a candidate's not only their experience but just like their thought process like it's rough coming out of college and trying to hit this adulting world adulting sucks so trying to like process what comes next or what do I do or what is good and what is not and what should I look for in a company those are things that we really don't overly think about when we're when we're young coming straight out of college most of the time we're just kind of like oh my god I need a job I'll take whatever Um, But in reality, you know, I I really always try to stress the importance of what it is that you should be looking for in a company. Like you want to find your company fit, whether it's with me and, you know, at Cone Resnick or whether it's with whoever else, like you want to make sure you're finding a company that you're going to love, that you're going to feel like fits, you know, your, your morals, your ethics, you know, what you're looking for out of a company. Like you want to find that cultural fit. And that's how I try to network to people of like, Hey, I'm here to help you just with recruiting questions in general. It's not based off of like my company alone. It's, I want to make sure that you understand the importance of employee appreciation. You understand the importance of employee engagement. You understand the importance of diversity inclusion in the workplace, you know, not just, oh, I see diversity in like all the people that are in the same level as me. No, I want to see diversity in the partners. I want to see diversity in the office managing partners. Like I want to see it at all levels because then I know it's real. Then I know that you actually want to see this throughout the whole company. So, you know, those are things that I try to push the importance of to, you know, students who are coming out of college, because I didn't think of any of that coming out of college. I was just like, I have bills. I need a job. I need a check. You know, those were, that's kind of how I came out of school thinking. I was like, just aggressively blindly applying to everything. Cause I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You know, you just get to that point where you're like, time is ticking. It's almost May. I'm going to have a degree and I don't have a job. What is happening? Um, so we just kind of start like going for anything, or we have this misconceived like notion of, I'm not supposed to love my job. I'm not supposed to love where I work. I'm supposed to work because I need money. When in reality, you want to love what you're doing and who you're working with. You spend a lot of time with these people. You know, you spend a lot of your 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 daily life working. So you want to make sure that it's someplace that you want to be. You know, so building that network because also, how else are you going to know outside of either talking to a recruiter or talking to people that actually work there? You know, my friends tell me all the time, okay, Tiara, we get it. Cone Resnick's great. Cool. We're not working there. We're not even accountants. I'm like, okay, sorry. Like, like where I work, you know? So it's, it's good because creating that network and creating those connections with people just in your field or just in general, like they can always probably give you feedback of other places. Like you can only hear, but so much, you know, but as a recruiter, yes, you might think like, of course, she's just selling a dream. Of course, she's going to talk highly of this company. That's, that's her job. She's supposed to. So sometimes it's great to have like, oh, I have a friend who were, who worked or is currently working at that company. They said like this, you know, having that genuine feedback um, of why someone loves to work there, why someone maybe left there. Um, one thing that I love and hate about even Glassdoor, like Glassdoor will give you great reviews as far as good or bad. Problem is I found out recently that there is an ability for a company to sometimes delete reviews. So sometimes you might not get it. You might not be getting all of the bad reviews. You might only be getting good reviews. Um, so, you know, always kind of finding like someone who works there is great. Um, if you have that type of network or, and like I said, tapping into your network's network, which is kind of like the concept of LinkedIn, right? You know, you're able to go in and say, Hey, do you happen to know anyone who works at Cone Resnick? And you're like, Oh yeah, actually 
I know like a friend who knows someone who works at Code Resnick. Like I'll ask them like what their experience is, you know? So that really can become beneficial um, and kind of show the importance of everything. Any questions, comments, concerns, anything? And like I said, it doesn't have to be like Code Resnick based. It can absolutely just be any type of question regarding anything I've said. You guys are quiet. All righty. Um, I'm trying to think if there is any aspect of, you know, really digging into that networking side that I've forgotten. Let me see if it'll let me like open to make sure I haven't missed anything. Um, so yeah, like I said, like exchanging ideas, newer opportunities. Um, using like a resource, having your resources, access to like high profile people. Oh, another, another aspect, um, the benefit of networking, like I said, when you're walking into career fairs or networking events or, or things like that, I've told you, I even struggle with it at times. It's a very awkward moment when you have to like go up to someone and introduce yourself. And you know, you're like, why would they even want to talk to me? Like, this is super weird. It's so forced. Like, you know, it, it's a very, it can be a very awkward moment. And, you know, I just kind of think that everyone's just like, who is this weirdo? Like, that's just me. So, you know, going into these events and learning to, you know, go up to people and have those random conversations and kind of spark just like, and, and it doesn't have to all be professional. It could be a very just casual, small talk type of conversation. You know, sometimes those conversations can, you know, naturally move to like something that's easier to talk about, like, oh, we connected over sports where we both love football. Oh, we connected over, um, we both love kayaking. I don't know. Like, you know, anything that can pop up can be a natural, you know, conversation like, oh, what do you like to do in your free time? Like just building that connection and trying to find something that you can connect on on a different level, because sometimes those are the people that stand out. Like, oh, I remember that person because we were talking about, you know, football, we really love the same team and, you know, everything like that. Like those type of things can help, but utilizing those moments to really kind of get past that awkward phase of not wanting to go up to people, it, it really does build that self-confidence. You know, nothing is better than having a student come up to me and they are able to sell their self where I'm like, I actually want to know this kid more. Like, you know, great conversation, really interesting, just has a lot of confidence, love it. Like it just stands out because, you know, we, I mean, I think as like campus recruiting, we get so used to like the super shy or the really nervous, or, you know, we kind of have to like talk someone off the ledge of like, hey, look, it's cool. We get it. Everyone's nervous. It can be a stressful environment. So when you like seeing those super confident people come through, isn't a norm for us, you know, seeing someone who's just like, nope, I'm cool. I can have this conversation. I don't, it doesn't, you know, fluster me at all. I'm able to talk about this. I'm able to get through general questioning and conversations like that doesn't come easy. And, you know, some of that is a matter of practicing. Some of it's a matter of just like going to different events. Like I said, career fairs and networking events or anything that you can go to just to like randomly spark up conversations and become more confident in what you're saying. And sometimes like lack of confidence comes from just lack of experience in certain areas. Um, you know, it's hard to seem confident over something when you're so new to an industry and you don't really have a lot of experience under your belt. I still have moments where I'm like, I don't feel like I'm on the same level to be in like panels or something. I think I mentioned even in my last one, like I still get nervous going into presentations where there's a whole panel because I'm like, I feel like I might not sound as knowledgeable as the next person on the panel or... I might, I don't feel like I have enough experience to contribute as much as the next person on the panel, you know? So you go, I go in just as nervous sometimes too, 
But like, once we start talking, I have to remind myself, like, you know what you're talking about. You know how to get through this. Like you can do this. And like, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I can sit here and have this conversation. I'm not stumbling. I'm not, you know, just sitting here like, oh yeah, uh, I, I agree. I agree. It's, it's great. Like, um, you know, I'm actually contributing to the conversation and able to give some advice and, you know, give that information out clearly because I know that I have that confidence in the subject that I'm talking about. Now, if you ask me to, you know, talk on a whole different subject that I don't really know much about, you'll start seeing that, you know, super like, yeah, kind of person again, like deer in headlights, don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but networking really can help build your confidence and, you know, help you get through those little questions that you're, you're not always able to answer on your feet. And now you're like, you know what? I got this. I've been doing this for, you know, a little while now I'm able to, it doesn't phase me, you know, I'm able to just roll right through this. And it, and it, and it shows, you know, when we meet those students, we're like, that kid was on it. They were great. <laughs> so, you know, that's what we really want to see. Um, and like I said, it's not saying like, those are the only people we hire because in campus recruiting, like I said, it's very, very common to get, you know, the students who are really nervous or, I've had people where I can like visibly see them shaking in interviews. And I'm like, oh my God, guys, we're not mean. I promise you, like we send like nicer people to do interviews. You know, we're not here to make you feel uncomfortable. We'll try cracking jokes to make you feel a little bit more e at ease. Like, you know, we're, we really just want you to be yourself and just to relax and have a regular conversation with us. Um, but that doesn't always come easily. And we get that. So that's why I said, like utilizing some of these events as a way to shake away that those nerves that come with it is is great and it's a great way to utilize your your resources for sure um and then like I said just developing those like long-lasting relationships um there are people that like I said I've worked with at my first job out of college who I still have connections with we will still randomly meet up for like a drink and just be like hey how's everything going and like you know, it might be a event session. It might be like, oh, hey, like how, like, are you do dealing with any struggles? Like, especially, you know, there are struggles that come with virtual recruiting. There are struggles that come with when everything switched to this virtual world, but there's also very good things that came from the virtual world, you know, that, that we got to experience. So having those relationships and finding out that, you know, being able to connect with other people in my network and even realizing that, hey, it's not just you guys. It's not just us. Like, we're both having these and even when you go back to your teams and saying hey we've chatted with other like we've chatted with other firms we realize like everyone's experiencing this issue right now it's not just our company like sometimes our partners need to hear that they don't know that from a recruiting perspective they might just say like oh wait we need candidates and we're like everyone's experiencing an issue it's it's all around it's not just us calm down, don't worry, you know, we have to be that confidence for them because they don't do our job, you know, so having that network can also make your, your job a little easier because you gain insight from other people as well of what they're experiencing, so, it, and it really can create those long-lasting relationships, you know, like I said, I still grab drinks with some of my previous co-workers, we hang out, we, you know, a few of them just came to like my engagement party. Like these are connections that I've made and I plan on keeping because they're very good friends now. Um, and that doesn't come, you know, easily of just, oh, we just said hi. You know, it was, we constantly had conversations. We constantly caught up. We gained information from one another. We used resources. And these are people from all walks of life. Like they're not just all my age and we just happen to connect. Like I have people who are older, I have people who are younger. You know, we're all at different stages of our lives, but we utilize that and are able to, you know, help throughout the way. So I think it's really beneficial. Any questions at all? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Leander. Are you muted or I can't hear you? No. <laughs> Hello? Hey, 
There you go. <laughs> uh, you can hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so nice, nice. Sorry about that. My <laughs> out a little bit. But my question is, what does what does networking once you're in your professional career look like? Are you are you sending like an email to your network like once a month, something like that? That's a good question. Um, I think everyone's a little different. So, you know, there are events that we can go to even as, you know, as you grow throughout your career, like there's still networking events that I can go to, like they're legitimate, like recruiting network events or stuff like that to build relationships and stuff, you know, along the way. Um, some people it's just casual, like reach outs, like, Hey, just checking in. How's everything going? How have you been? It's been a long time. Haven't talked to you in a while. It's not a very structured, like we do this. I mean, some people have like monthly, like lunches with some of the people in their network. You know, some people have, we have like little, like, oh, we, we did like a little getaway every like once a year and we all like connect and like disconnect from the world and, you know, you know, chat and, and go somewhere and like stay like, you know, sometimes that happens. Every part of your network is not the same. You know, you have very just strictly professional network side of everything. You have the more personable side. Like I said, like the people who have come to my engagement party and we hang out and we do things outside of the professional world. We have those people that we might connect. We're a little bit closer, but we're in that middle ground. Like we only connect more on a professional level, but like it's a little bit more casual and laid back. We, we have a lunch here and there, you know, every branch of your network is a little different and you have to treat it as such. Um, so all of my people that I can reach out to like, Hey, I have a great candidate that's looking for a position. Like not all of them I'm on this super, super close level with, but it's on some level that I can feel free to reach out to them casually and just be like, Hey, have a candidate. If you guys have any like positions open or stuff, let me know. And I'll send them your way you know, those type of conversations I can send to my closest of close networks, or I can send to like, hey, we're more on just the professional level. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to probably go out to lunch with my super, super professional side of just people that I might have met, or the random CEO that I met at an event. Probably not going to happen, you know, but it's just understanding the, the levels of your network and creating a solid level at each kind of way. Like, when you have a mentor, different levels of mentors, like there's those mentors who you talk to weekly, monthly, like whatever, and go out to lunches and you connect and you strategize with, and you kind of like get advice on like career moves that you should make. And you can talk about your job and everything like that. And then there's some mentors of just like, Hey, like really love what you're doing here. And you just kind of watch their career and kind of base everything kind of off of and trying to lead in that same direction. You know, it, it's, it's so many different ways that you can look at a network and utilize your network. That's what's tricky about it uh, and, and building it slowly. So some of those, like I said, same with me, it's the people that I'm super close with. There's people that I kind of just know, and, and maybe some of them don't travel with you as you leave a position. You know, some of your network, I could reach out to a whole bunch of people at my first job and it helped because they knew my name. So I could be like, Hey, can you fix this? Hey, can you handle this? Like need help with this? Like something that another person in my department could reach out and maybe their email might not get looked at immediately. I knew I had that connection with them where I could reach out and they would respond to me pretty quickly to help me fix the situation that was going on. So, you know, I, I could get things troubleshooted a little bit faster because I had built that rapport with them. We weren't best of friends, but we had built that mutually professional relationship where I could reach out and they would help us troubleshoot anything at any time. Whereas now I don't know where those people are because I'm no longer with the company. You know, it's just like maybe some of your networking is in the moment at the position that you're in. Does that make sense? So it can be seen at so many different levels. I, I get the picture. But I, yeah. I wouldn't be able to put it into words. <laughs> no, absolutely. Henry. Yeah, so let's say you do know like one of those CEOs and you want to involve that uh, relationship yeah. beyond just like professional. How can you involve it to like more personable and stuff? Because 
you know, that's, I feel like where I get stuck a lot. You know, I meet a lot of professionals and, you know, we have a cool conversation, but I don't want to just hit them up and be like needy and stuff. I know they got work, they got business. And I want to be like, hey, let's have a coffee chat and talk about nothing. <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, I think sometimes utilizing um, the platforms that you might be in. So if you're, for instance, if like you're an intern with our company, like some people are like, hey, like, is there any way, like I've had interns ask me, like, is there any way that I can like maybe like meet with one of the OMPs and like, you know, just like pick their brain a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, I'll see what I can do and like set up some time. And a lot of them are more than happy to try to make time to sit with interns and, and stuff to like, you know, have a, a quick chat with them. And it might be like a 30 minute, like, like you said, like a coffee, little, a little coffee break of just like, Hey, so what's on your mind? Like, what do you want to chat about? And it's just like, Hey, just have these random questions. Just want to kind of get some perspective, like any recommendations or, you know, things along the, that nature. And then following up with emails or things like that, like, you know, thanks. I just want to say thanks for having the chat with me. Would love to be able to maybe like, you know, chat with you or, or keep connected with you along the along the way you know I understand you're super busy if there's anything and like sometimes they'll just be like yeah like let me know if there's anything I can help with you know having them say like maybe not necessarily from a perspective of like yeah we can have lunch every single month you know someone might surprise you and say that I'm just saying but you know they could also just be like yeah but if you need anything or you have any questions please you know ask me anytime I'm always here to help you know that's kind of like you're in of like oh, hey, I have like a random, I'm not saying every little question, obviously don't message like the top of the company, but you know, if there's a random, like, you know, would really love to pick your brain on like, kind of like the career process that you took, like, you know, if there's, if you're able to set up some time or, you know, maybe if you're able to do this, like asking for those big type of like questions, you know, you've now opened that door to be able to, you know, kind of reach out randomly and have those conversations. Um, so utilizing like an internship as you're in for sure. Um, following up with people through LinkedIn is huge. You know, after an event like that, like connecting with them, bringing up something they actually spoke about. You know, if you asked a question during the, the event, just if you asked a question during the event, just saying like, hey, you know, I wanted to, you know, connect with you, really enjoy chatting with you. Super glad I got to ask you like a couple of questions that were on my mind you know, would love to be able to connect with you or maybe have like a quick coffee chat. You can ask them in LinkedIn. Like sometimes they'll definitely check in and be like, it might not be right away because not everyone is actively connected to LinkedIn as much as like maybe recruiters are. But, you know, as it's always said, like shoot your shot. You never know what's going to happen. You know, the worst that can happen is what? You don't get a reply. But the best that it can happen is you can create a really great you know, networking connection. So I'm always a strong believer of shoot your shot, see what you can gain, especially if your only connection is maybe like a big, huge presentation. Um, but I've seen people who, oh, how did you get such a great connection? I just randomly messaged them. I've heard those stories all the time. It's not far-fetched, trust me. So I would, I would definitely say, you know, reach out ask for those moments. And then when you get that, that in, find a connection, find something you guys can chat about. Because if it's like, oh, we both were huge Ravens fans. Guess what? On that Ravens, if it's a big, huge Ravens Steelers game and the Ravens win, I'm absolutely messaging you. And I'm probably going to say like, how about those Ravens? Like, that's my connection. That's my end. That's how we can chat. And, you know, it could be something as simple as that of keeping that connection alive. Got it. Thank you. No, absolutely. Any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. Okay, go. Yes. Um, for example, you already have an offer uh, for this upcoming uh, summer internship, and then you have another summer next year for another internship. How would you ask um, your uh, the firm that you're going that you want to try a different you know firm? for an internship for the following year? Like you wanna try, like you did audit one time and you wanna try tax the next, is that what you're saying? A totally different uh, firm. Oh, you wanna go to a completely different firm. I mean, you don't really have to ask anyone. <laughs> <laughs> you, that's the good thing. Like 
the the only thing about accounting is typically if you have an internship and you do well they give you a full-time offer Definitely. what you do between that internship and your possible full-time offer if you decide to accept that full-time offer is completely up to you if you choose to like go intern with another firm we also offer repeat internships at times as well so if it's a matter of like hey really wanted to make some extra money I completely understand. I was that super broke college student. So if anyone tells me they're just trying to make money, I trust me, I understand wholeheartedly. Um, the, the stickiness and from stickiness, I mean, just from like, some people are afraid to have those conversations comes into play. Like, for instance, if you interned at one firm the previous year, and then you intern at another firm, and you've now gotten a full time offer from them as well. Now it's like, do I stick with the one I accepted or do I want to go with a different company? You know, so now you have two full-time offers and you have to make a decision because they both offered you a position. One, you might've already said yes to, and now you have to say either yes or no to this new one. And if you say yes to the new one, you then have to have that conversation with the old one of like, hey, unfortunately, I've decided to go a different route. Some people are terrified of those conversations. So... <laughs> You know, is it the easiest conversation? No, it's a little awkward because now you're telling someone, eh, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> so, you know, it, you just have to be prepared for what comes with it. All right. Uh, thank you so you much. You can't ghost someone. <laughs> thank you. No, absolutely. Anyone else? I love the question so far. Hi, well, expanding off of Eric, yeah. Have you have you seen some individuals do do the exact thing that he's talking about where they went with a different firm and what were the ways they handled it and then the subsequent outcome just out of curiosity like Yeah. Um uh, just and it, it's funny because this wasn't a thing that I really dealt with until I got into the accounting world um as a recruiter. Um it, it's called reneging on an offer. So you say you accept it and then you come back later and say you don't accept which that's, that's your right. You can do or don't do whatever you want. Um, but that wasn't common for me in any other job, any other company I worked with, any other industry I worked with, like that wasn't a thing. So when I came into accounting and they were like, yeah, it, it's common for people to renege because it's such a competitive industry. Like it is very much like ideal environment for a candidate. Like you have people who are really like ready to throw an offer at you. Like you can pretty much go anywhere. Candidates are in high demand at all times. So it's very much a candidate market. Um, but that was something I was just like, this is, this is normal. Like that was so, it was a very weird concept for me to get adjusted to at first. And like, you have to like learn not to take it personally. Cause you're like, are you serious? Like, you know, you have those moments as a recruiter because like, that's another person you have to recruit for um, or another spot that you thought was filled. So like you learn in the kind of the accounting world, like, you don't really count, you know, anything until they actually start. You're like, cool, they're here. We're good. We got them. Great. It's fine. Um, but it's, it's more of a, um, yes, it's common. How you, how you handle it can be big. Um, because like I said, you also don't know who knows who. And you never want to get a bad rep going anywhere um, accounting is a very big world, but as far as like recruiters, they're very tight. Like a lot of, for instance, like a lot of mid tier firms will know a lot of mid tier firms. We know people at big fours. We know, my, um, my boss was actually married to a woman who worked at a big four company. It was great for us because we got insight on big four all the time. It was great. You know, it was amazing. Um, but you know, those are type of things. Sorry, I'm turning off my space heater. It got warm in here. Um, those are things that kind of come with the position of like how you handle that. You know, I've had very professional ways of, you know, hey, can I set up some time with you? And you actually get on a call with me and just say, unfortunately, like I did have another opportunity to work with a firm and, and I am kind of going a different way. Um, that's okay. You know, like I said, I can't sit here and say, well, you're obligated to work here. No, you're not. It, it's completely up to you. Um, but like I said, how you handle that, but being upfront with them, um, some people might jump ship because they were able to start with a company earlier. Like I said, 
no one understands broke problems like me. I was that person through college. I was like, I need a job yesterday. Like, can I get a job before college ends? Like, I need to know this because I need money. Um, so looking at, if, if you really love the company that you got an offer with, but it's just a technicality of like, I need to start early. And this company said I can start in like May as opposed to September. I'm starting in May. Call your recruiter and just simply say like, hey, unfortunately, like due to financial reasons, like I really do need to start early. And I, and unfortunately, like I have the opportunity to start as early as May with another firm. Is there anything that you can do? Because sometimes there's, there is. There's plenty of times where we're not going to lose a candidate over a technicality of just a start date. Um, you know, so being up front with them as much as possible along the, along the way, just like I said, you know, some people think that they can't get another internship at a company because they already have a full-time offer. We have um, repeat interns all the time. They come in and do another round and it does help them because they get more training, you know, before they even start with their full-time. Um, or we might be able to keep them on at a part-time capacity or things like that. Like there's different options. Um, so I would always say, always stay in contact with your recruiter. We genuinely are here to help. Um, we're not just like, oh, they're higher. Cool. We're good. We're, we want to make sure that you're, you have everything you need, that we're here to advocate for you at all times. So, you know, utilizing that, but then also you could also just send an email. I mean, if you don't, like a lot of people send emails because they want to avoid that awkward conversation. It's like a breakup call. Who wants to have that breakup call? No one. It's weird. Some people like panic and they, they like feel terrible. And I'm like, it's okay. You can have the conversation. <laughs> um, so some people send emails and some of the emails are very well written out. Have I gotten terrible ways of people telling me like, hey, I'm not going with you? Absolutely. Um, that are very less than professional. So, you know, just being, you know, professional about it, just saying, unfortunately, I have another opportunity. You know, it, I've had like, oh, it was a hard decision, but due to certain circumstances, I've chosen to go here. If they're offering more money, you know, okay, I get that. Like, unfortunately, like that's one thing that most companies can't negotiate with is their, like their entry level rate is what it is, you know? So if somewhere is offering like, 70 in some places offering 75 that's usually their rate because that's just their entry level rate like they can't just throw out numbers it's not like an experience position where we can negotiate based off of experience you don't have experience so it's not really much to negotiate off of that's everyone starting at your level is that price <laughs> so um you know that that kind of comes down to just like technicality of what you want um i've had an intern that I tried to give a breakdown to that was going from, so in Mid-Atlantic we have, I was dealing with a Baltimore office and a Tyson's office. One's Maryland, one's Virginia, but it's right, like they're only like barely an hour apart. Um, are the rates different? Yes, but the cost of living is different. Those are things that we don't always think about. We see just, oh, this place is offering $5,000 more. Well, yeah, but the cost of living is more expensive there. That's why it's not just because, oh, this place is better. We want to offer you more. Um, so they see the difference, but I'm like, when the taxes hit, it's going to be about the same for a reason, you know? And for anyone who's not familiar with how much taxes hit your checks, it's, it can hurt your feelings really quickly. Nothing is worse than thinking you do that math of what that salary could look like. And you see what it looks like after every two weeks. But then you see how much you actually get. It's enough to cry off of. It's cool. <laughs> but you know, but people don't see that coming out of college. And these are the things that, like I said, as a recruiter, I try to help you better understand. I try to help you walk through and I try to explain. I'm like, hey, I completely respect your decision. It's five thousand dollars more. Cool. But I just want to put in perspective for you that it is way more expensive to live in Northern Virginia than it is Maryland. Way more expensive which is why that $5,000 isn't gonna look like much. Once taxes come out, that might be $5 more in your check than what you were getting, what you were gonna be getting here. I remember my first ever raise coming out of college and they were like, you're getting $5,000 more. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is huge, $5,000 more. I think my check was like $30 extra. My feelings were crushed. My heart was hurt. <laughs> like it was enough to like go drink a bottle of wine in the corner and cry. Like 
you just knew you were hitting it big. It's like hitting the lottery and then getting like the after taxes type of money and you see how big of a difference it is. Um, and those are things, like I said, I just try to kind of coach them on the way to help. But I mean, at the end of the day, you, you have to make the decision that's best for you. Only even when I used to hire for experienced recruiting and I asked them like, where are you looking for, for a desired salary? And some people were like, oh, it's negotiable. And I'm like, it's not though. Because you know what you can live off of. Don't ever short yourself. Because if I come in and you're, you're currently making like 80K and you don't tell me and you're like, oh, it's negotiable. And I come to you at 60, it's not negotiable. You're taking a 20K cut? Probably not. But we could have avoided all of this wasted time if you just said like what you, because you know what your bills look like. You know what you can live off of. I don't know what that number looks like for you. I know what I'm not going below. I know what I can't live off of because I've tried. It doesn't work, <laughs> you know? So having that, just being realistic and having those conversations, you know what you need in your life. So, and if that doesn't work or if you found a company that is a better cultural fit, that's fine too. You just have to let them know. Is it a weird conversation? Probably because you've never had it before. Like I said, it's like a weird breakup conversation, but it's a conversation nonetheless that needs to be had. So. But it's not bad. We're, I mean, we're not going to catch feelings. We're not going to hate you. If you say hi to us at a career fair, we're not going to be like, oh, don't talk to me. <laughs> it's no hard feelings. It happens. Still come say hi to us. <laughs> Any other questions? I might have a question. Um, I know okay. that you're talking about um, getting offers. I haven't received any offers. I'm still applying. Um, but let's say I do get an offer and let's say I don't have an answer for the firm and they call me with an offer. What would be the appropriate like words or something to say? What do you mean you don't have a, an answer and then they call? I'm sorry, I'm confused. Let's Are say you saying, like if they call you with an offer and you're not sure if you want to accept it. Yes, correct. Oh, okay. Um, so, I mean, if they initially call you, you can just ask like, when do you need an answer by? Um, usually they'll give you a time frame. Um, like for us with our entry level positions, especially if we're hiring a full year out, we can easily give you a few weeks to you know process everything. Now, if it's a position that we're hiring for quicker, like within the next few months or stuff like that, it's like, hey, I got a week for you because I need to know what my numbers are. I need to know if we still need to keep recruiting, what exactly that looks like. Um, so that time frame and that turnaround could be very different for every position. Ask them simply like when they need an answer by. And if they tell you a couple of weeks, like you have that time to like think about it. And you also have that time to ask questions. Like if you have questions regarding something like, oh, what does, excuse me, I pick ups now. Um, what does this include? Um, if it's for like a full-time position, hey, can I get a, a review of like the benefits package? And, you know, Anything else that they say that comes with it, like for instance, all of our entry level associates, we cover your CPA studying material. Hey, can you send me the information for that? Like, so you can look at everything because if you have another offer from somewhere as well, you can compare it. Do I still know what I'm necessarily looking for when you give me a benefits package? Not really. Benefit packages are confusing unless you're in benefits. And I'm still like, I don't know what I'm looking for. And I'll like, this is one of those moments, like you'll still call someone like that's older than you. And you're like, is this a good benefits package? And they're like, oh yeah, that's great. And I'm like, oh, okay, great, thanks. You know, so looking at all the things that you can kind of get with that or comparing, asking more about the company, if you have questions, utilize your recruiter, as I've said, as much as possible, you know, asking them like, hey, you know, can you tell me a little bit more about this? Can you tell me more about like growth opportunities? Can you tell me more about the experience of this? Like, those are questions that you should be asking. Like, if you have them, I'm not saying you have to come up with a million questions out of nowhere if you don't have them, but like, if you have questions or if there's something holding you back, ask, because I guarantee you they can answer it for you or they can set up some time to chat with some of the other professionals to help better explain maybe a process for you of, so that you know better what to expect. Like all of those things can happen. And 
you know, unfortunately, sometimes deadlines are deadlines, like they can't always extend it or give you a lot of time, just because of what we need to accomplish on our end. But you know, if they're giving you the time and you and there's something holding you back or, or making you like, like, I just don't know, like, ask those questions. Because we can't just figure out what it is or we can't just be like oh okay like is there anything that we need to ask answer for you like you know ask the question that you have or if something's holding you back just you know throw it out there and they can usually see what they can do or they can help answer it or help calm your nerves or whatever that looks like and then you just kind of move on from there and if you if you're not interested that's okay too if what they're selling isn't interesting you or if you think that it's not like a good fit for you especially if it's not like a good cultural fit or you don't feel like there's a connection, you gotta listen to your gut. You kind of got to go with that. So I hope that answered your question. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. No problem. I see we have a couple minutes left, so I would love to answer any questions you guys might have. Is this the last, this is the last call for questions. Any more questions? All right. So I'd like to close it off with some announcements. So RSVP for that all clubs barbecue on Friday. And also tomorrow we're having an evening meeting with what? No, a 12 to one meeting with Wiley. And we hope to see you all there. And Thursday as well is the private industry and government meet the firms. I'll pass it on to Isaac now for uh, the screenshot. Right, so if everyone could turn on the cameras or those who can't or feel comfortable doing so for the screenshot. That's all I had to say to get everybody on camera. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll be doing a countdown. So <clears throat> three, two, one. Perfect. Right. So that, I guess, as you hear, do you have any as many words? I think that's it. I mean, you guys ask great questions. Like I said, at the end of the day, like utilize your network as much as possible. Um, there's so many different branches and, and levels to networking. Um, you kind of figure it out along the way, you know, you start feeling out how those those networks are and what level you're at with those, you know, connections. So utilize them as much as possible. Um, it, it definitely is an important part of, you know, building a, a, a solid foundation for your career. It really does help. It makes your life a little easier along the way. Um, you'd be surprised how much a connection can possibly help out of nowhere. So definitely encourage you to take advantage of it as much as possible. Um, please connect with me on LinkedIn. Would love to have you guys um, connected there. Um, and like I said, it doesn't have to be Cone Resnick based, but if you guys ever have just like a recruiting question in general, please feel free to reach out. I'm always here to help out. Thank you everyone for attending today's meeting with Absolutely. Cone Resnick. And thank you, Thanks Tara, for, having for me. coming. <laughs> we have a good one, guys. Good evening. Bye. Bye. Oh, last minute things, Justin, questions, concerns? Ashley, do you have any questions? Okay. I guess not. <laughs> I guess. I guess. Come on. <laughs> you just laughed like that. Justin, I think he's AFK. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Uh, you, you just came back. <laughs> Oh, I forgot to end the recording.